In this video, I show you how I retrofit a CNC back gauge for pennies on a dollar that the manufacturer of the back gauge wanted over $4,000 just for parts to fix. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I tell you exactly how much I spent and provide links so you can do the same thing. This is my 90 ton, 10 foot long CNC brake press. When I got it in, it's got the auto gauge controller on it. It's giving me error codes. So I contacted Automech, the makers of this. They gave me a jumper schematic to jump the wires for the servo to see if the back gauge actually moves and it does. So they proceeded to tell me instead of helping me fix this, they would sell me a retrofit screen for almost $4,000. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna retrofit this whole thing for myself for a couple hundred dollars. I ordered a new servo, I ordered a new power supply, and I'm gonna run this off Mach 3 and get rid of this here. So here's the current servo setup on this machine. It has this little pulley right here, and it moves the back gauge back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is take all this off, and I'm gonna run directly to the ball screw. So I'm gonna have to use my CNC machine and make a back plate for the new servo to connect directly to this shaft. So hopefully I can use some of these uh, mounting holes here to help me bolt the, the new plate on. All right, so I got the servo motor taken off here. And you see this is a half inch shaft with a keyway. My new NEMA stepper motor is the same size, but I have to marry that to this. And then I have to make a mounting plate. I'm wondering if these are sturdy enough that I can use these and mount the plate to it. Have the hole right here, mount the other servo motor to it and use it that way. If not, I can use some of these mounting holes right here for the plate up here. I just still have to have these little extensions right here. I have to make them. And here's my stuff I'm gonna be using to retrofit. Here's all the electronics in here. And here's my Nemo motor. So I basically have to make a coupler from here to the other side. And then here's all the electronics inside of here. So if you follow the channel, you might notice this is my old facility. And this is an older video that I never released because I actually lost a little bit of footage in there. So I never released it. So I'll leave links below for all this stuff. So if you guys want to use this stuff for anything you can, um, these applications can be used for anything. It's just a little control board. And that's like a NEMA 42 stepper motor I use because it's bigger. It has more torque for this application because I wasn't using the belt system on this. All right, so now I have my sketch. So I'm gonna take some of this plexiglass I have here and just cut it out, see if it's gonna work. So what I used to cut the plexiglass was a really strong fiber laser that I got from Vivor. And I wanna say it's like 600 bucks or something like that with the fourth axis. Um, I'll leave a link for that down below. The thing cuts super crispy, super nice. It's since it's a fiber laser, you can cut really thin steel and you can cut really thick acrylic or wood and uh, I use it for a lot of stuff like you don't think you'll use it for as much as you do until you have it so they have cheaper ones too if you don't want to cut this thick but i wanted to be able to cut really thick like three quarters of an inch wood and acrylic so again i'll leave a link in the description below for vivor where i got that and you guys can check that out what i pretty much do is cut this bracket out and then i go in the back i assemble everything and then i bring you guys back like i said i lost a little bit of footage in here so it doesn't have the whole process of me actually putting it on and installing the motor, but it's pretty straightforward. If, it, if it's thick enough to actually use the mounting plate, so let's just see if it fits here. Yeah, it fits perfect on there. All right, so I'm about 90% done with the retrofit of this back gauge. Let me show you what I got. So just to recap, this is the old controller. Um, Automech wanted $4,000 just for this part right here, not including the servos and back gauge. So here's what I came up with. Here's a laptop that I had laying around for free. I'm running Mach 3. I cut this mount onto the existing mount. I heated it and bent it, measured the holes. And here's all the controls. This is the servo drive, the power unit, and that's 
pretty much the brain right there. So I am gonna make a box around that. I just wanted to get it mounted for now. And then here's the servo that I mounted on here with the coupling. Pretty simple, just tore all that old automatic stuff off of there, reused the, the gauge that was the back gauge that was in here set up, which is really easy. I'm actually gonna retrofit one for a guy and uh, put a ball screw in there for him. This is just the ball screw and the, the mount is all you need. And then this here, this is really, really strong. So this is it, let me show you how it works. So here's Mach 3. You can see here, it'll go back and forth. There's the gauge back. Here's the gauge forward. And you can set up soft limits so it only goes back a certain amount. And that's about it. And then if you go into MDI here, just type in G0. Y, let's go to zero and get it back. So it should come right back up. I set it to zero just for this right there, just for this demonstration. And then G zero, I don't know, you wanna go back 18 inches. Just hit it, it'll go back 18 inches. Boom, there's 18 inches. And again, G0, Y0, bring it back up. It'll come back up. And that's pretty much as simple as that is. And it's complete. I'm gonna do some wire loom over some of this stuff. And like I said, get a box over the controls. But other than that, this is it. So if I wanted to do, there's a couple other things I could do, like put a limit switch on here. So when it goes down and comes back up, it'll go to the next position. But you could i can also just program in like stops if i want so i can go like g0 whatever and then have a pause for like five or ten seconds and then it'll move back to the next position so there's multiple ways you can do that if you made it to the end of this video here's the price breakdown i bought the nema 34 stepper motor kit with the power supply to run it for 142 dollars and 50 cents and i purchased the mach 3 motion control board for $15.50. Altogether, that comes out to $158. That's insane. The manufacturer wanted over $4,000 before shipping just for control to fix this machine, and I did it for $158. Again, I'll leave links in the description below for all the parts that I use for this, and I really appreciate all the support I've got on my recent videos. I'm a small channel. It really keeps me motivated to make these videos. Again, leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff helps me out, keeps me motivated to do this stuff in the future. See you on the next one.